Hey friends and welcome back to today's Tone Tuesday. And for once, I thought today we would make it a Tone Tuesday. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at some of the classic, classic rock tones and see if we can get them out of the Axe FX3. Coming right up. All the classic rock sounds from Clapton back in Cream, uh, from Hendrix, right the way through to um, ACDC. One thing they all had in common was the use of the Marshall Plexi or JTM 45. So today what we're going to do is we're going to set up a patch in the Axe FX. What I've got here is a completely clean patch set up with nothing on it. And we're just going to set it up and see if we can recreate quite a classic tone. First thing we need to do when setting up an Axe FX is to select an input. By right clicking, we select an input and we'll take that from input one. Now here, we're just going to join these like so, just so that I've got a little space for anything else I might like to put in the front end. And then here, we're going to pop in an amp. And look, we've already got the Plexi Jump in there, which is what I'm gonna stick with, which is uh, the Plexi JTM45 with the inputs jumped. And then we will add a cab. Let's have a look, cab one, and let's connect those. And we'll make cab one. Let's have a quick see what we've got here. Uh, we want to pick a four by 12. So I'm going to come all the way down to the 4x12s and I'm looking for Marshall 4x12s. There we go. 4x12 Brit 70s GB 60A. So we'll use that. We're going to do the same again to connect a few of these just to give us some options in the output. And then we're going to select output one as well. Now this should give us our basic tone. Now one of the things that you'll note about players like Clapton, Anne Hendrix, Jimmy Page, um, Angus Young, is they don't have their volume on full. So I'm going to roll it back to about halfway to get... That's a really nice tone already, halfway up. What you'll find, if we go back to the amp settings here, is the Plexi was designed to sound really good when you put up the amplifier, the master volume, there we go, it's up, rather than the drive being high. A lot of people put far too much drive on Plexi amps, and in fact, it just doesn't need it. So there we go, we've got the master volume already right the way up on 10 and then we've set the level. We'll leave that as it is. I'm not going to mess about with the EQ or anything like that at the moment. I'm just going to leave that all as it is as well. So everything's really, really flat. So let's go back and have a little listen to this tone. Just again, halfway up on the knob and we're going to go on the bridge pickup just to get that sort of So you can see there's still plenty of headroom on the knob. So we're now wind that up a little bit more to kind of, I suppose about nine. And it's already a lead tone. I'm just literally using the Harley Benton um, 
SG shaped guitar with the stock Roswell pickups in it. You've got a, a little bit less coming out of the neck pickup, but that's tons. That's about what those players would have used. Uh, you, can you imagine that Clapton tone? <laughs> it wasn't that distorted, so he rolled it back to about five to get that real classic. Okay, so if we wanna just crank it a little bit more, we can easily do that just by going over to the, um, the amp settings. Again, I'll show you those and just pushing a little bit of the drive up. So we'll have a listen what that does. So this is at five. And you can see how muddy that gets. So I'm gonna take that back off. I actually don't like the drive, anything past that. Let's try the treble drive. nice tone. What we can do with the axe effects is we can stick a little bit of a drive in front of the amp just to give it a little bit of overdrive. Where are we? Uh, drive. There we go. We'll just try the drive one and here I'm just going to go in and select the classic 808 and we will have a little listen to what that does to the circuit as well. So again, just taking it up a little bit from. Right, this is a good point, a case in point. If we disable the drive a moment, the, uh, the tone of the amp cleans up. And there is none of that cleanup. We've got distortion right the way. So now when we take that up to full. So what we can do to limit that a little bit is just take the mix of that drive down just a touch to 50-50. So we pop that at about 50%. There we go. Close enough for jazz. And then we will check out that tone again. <laughs> So now we've got a nice drive on there and we can really get some oomph out of the drive. But it still cleans up. Next thing we're going to do is after the amp, in fact we need to move the cab, which should be as easy as that. We're just gonna pop a little bit of reverb in there. So let's find, uh, we'll just go with reverb one, cause why not? And we'll, we'll see which type of reverb we're gonna use. Let, um, well, why not stick with a, a medium room? That's fine, absolutely fine. So then we can add this little bit of reverb. <laughs> So what we want to do is just raise that mix up a little bit so that we can hear it a bit better. And should we want a slightly larger room, we can just increase the room size. It's quite nice. And then maybe 
We want the reverb to last a little longer as well, which will give us another feeling of it being a bigger room. <laughs> We can just take the mix down a bit so that it's a bit lower in the mix. Really like the sound of that. Uh, for a lead tone, we can stick the drive back in on that. So there we've got quite a basic tone. Again, if we want to, we could easily put the reverb after the cab, which is just a case of moving it, as simple as that. And we'll see what that sounds like. Oftentimes with recording, you will add the reverb after the amp. So. We'll leave that there because we can now just go to the front end of the amp and we, we haven't got a problem here because this isn't a very noisy circuit. But what we could easily put in here is a gate to take out any nasty noise. So we've got a gate expander there. But what we can put in here when we don't need a gate is a compressor. Now this will give us, bring our low level sounds up a little bit and make it more tight and close in level to our heavier attacked sounds. So now let me give it to you with the compressor. And then without. So the compressor in this case is acting more like a cut. Uh, so that it's, it's just literally holding back the higher levels. And then finally, one last little thing that we can add for a bit of fun that I'm going to put in here is a delay. So I'm going to leave it as it is and let's have a quick listen to what it sounds like. Now I quite like that but I could actually do with it just being a little bit slower. Sorry faster I should say. Not one millisecond. I'm going to take it down to about three three four. If you wanted to actually have it repeat more times, then we just turn the feedback up. And now we've got far more repeats. But for our purposes, I think I'm just going to take it somewhere between those two. So we get a couple of repeats. So let's have a listen to what that does to our lead tone. Really nice. But let's not forget that all the originals that we've been looking at didn't use reverb, didn't use delay, didn't use drive, didn't use compression. The likes of Clapton and even still Angus Young just go straight through the amp and that's where they get that marvellous rock tone. <laughs> Obviously these days we do like a little bit of reverbing on the end, but other than that...
So there you have it. Very, very basic use of the Axe FX. I'm really in love with the way that this Axe FX does sound so much like the original amps. As always, let me know what you think in the comments down below. I hope this has been a fun Tone Tuesday, just working out a brand new tone on the Axe FX using really good old fashioned JTM 45, the old Plexi Marshall, uh, using this Harley Benton guitar. And hopefully you found it interesting and enjoyable to look at how the Axe FX works. I'll be back with plenty more. If you like this, we can look at discovering precise tones of players, if that's something you'd be interested in. But I hope this has been a, a nice little uh, Tuesday afternoon jaunt. I've certainly enjoyed it. I'll be back with the best content I can really soon. In the meantime, please give this a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. It can't hurt to subscribe, and if you do, don't forget to click that bell icon so that you get notified every time I do an upload, which is usually every Tone Tuesday, Freddy Friday, and Streaming Sunday. And as I say, I'll be back real soon. In the meantime, as always, folks, you take good care.